believe it or not, about two thirds of people don't have a will. Today, we're learning from the missteps of the rich and famous to help prevent a fight in your family. Husband and wife duo Andy and Danielle Mayores are legacy expert attorneys and the authors of the new book, Trials and Heirs, Famous Fortune Fights. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mary. Thanks. Uh, it's a really fun book and a great way to learn about estate planning. All these celebrity lessons, what were your favorites? I have to say, when I think of legendary cases, I think of Anna Nicole Smith. Her billionaire husband passed away 15 years ago, and since then she's passed away, the stepson she was battling's passed away, and the case lives on. It's even gone up to the United States Supreme Court twice. And it's still on. Still on. Hard to believe. <laughs> and Mary, one of my favorites is the Jimi Hendrix case. 34 years after he died, his brother and half-sister waged a huge, nasty, and expensive battle, and the half-sister won everything. And Jimmy didn't have a will, or that whole thing could have been avoided. Oh, wow. So really, and these are the celebrity stories. A lot of them we haven't heard of before, so it's a really fun read. When you look at that, how is the best way to avoid these fights? Unfortunately, there's no way to completely avoid a fight, but you certainly can minimize your chances greatly by working with a good lawyer. And for gosh sakes, people should never take shortcuts like putting a son's name on a bank account rather than doing a will. And it's extra important when there's second marriages or siblings who just don't get along. And to add to what Andy said, I tell everyone, please don't have co-executors. Don't name two or three people to manage the estate together. That's just a recipe for a family fight. And, and there's so <laughs> many examples of it in your book. And the case of someone who did it right, Frank Sinatra, right? Yeah. And, and so you'll have to read to get the details on that one. I love that one. Now, if you're going to draft a will, find a good attorney, right? That's a good first step. You know, what else do you need? What should you be looking for in that attorney just besides? that they're an estate attorney? I think that's such an important question. When you go to the attorney, you want to ask them questions, and of course you can get referrals from friends, but ask them, how long have you been specializing in this area? And don't just look at the gray hairs on their head and think that that means they've been doing the estate planning a long time. You really want to get to know them and that they specialize in it. Because they've seen some of these bumps in the road before. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's a big quality of attorneys out there. The important thing is to find someone you're really comfortable with, and don't be afraid to shop around. Is a homemade will valid? Like if I just write something out at home? It actually <laughs> is if somebody witnessed you and two witnesses sign the document. And then there's about half the states where even without witnesses, if it's handwritten, signed and dated, it's valid. There's even a famous case from Canada where a farmer was trapped and he scratched his will into a bumper and that was found to be valid. How often should I update that? You know, I would say every three to five years you want to update your documents or sooner if a life event happens like you get married, a divorce, a birth, and you don't even have to wait until the birth. As soon as someone gets pregnant, that's a great time to update the document. Because you know, a change is coming. Absolutely. Don't wait for the change. Do it now. Great stuff and a wonderful book. Thank, Thank you both you. for joining me. Thank great you. Great to meet you both.